Okay, guys, girls, let's talk about this homework, see how we deal with it. I think you should, we should do well. Um, so, again, normal curve is over and over and over what this chapter is all about. It's, it really has to do with, you know, once you find the average, you can find the standard deviation of data set, and then take a look at it. We talked about this, this relates to AP scores. Other places that you will see this type of, uh, type of grading um, is, if any of you go into the military, there's something called the stay nine score. And that's basically just breaking the area on the curve into nine areas. Uh, percentiles go all the way up to the 99th percentile. So that's basically taking the normal curve and breaking it into equally distributed increments to show you where you fall amongst the rest of the people that took it. Uh, International Baccalaureate breaks it up uh, into seven categories. And so it's really just taking that normal curve, <coughs> breaking it up into a region, and so we're going to just go through this and see how we do. So the first questions on here, you had a, you had a normal curve that we we're going to draw. In there, they tell us that 68.5 is the average height of American women. And then the standard deviation is 2.5. So if I come each way, 2.5, if I add 2.5 to that, well, if I add 2 to that, I get 70. If I add another 0.5, it gets to 71. And then if I keep going, add another 2.5, it gives me 73.5. If I add another 2.5, that's going to give me uh, 76. Okay? And then if I go this way, if I subtract 2.5, that's going to take me down to 66. If I subtract another 2.5, that's going to take me to 63.5. And if I subtract another 2.5, um, that's going to take me down to 61. Okay, so this, this happens to be, it says, heights of American women are known to be distributed normal with a mean or an average of 68.5, so that's the middle, and a standard deviation of 2.5. And the reason why we're not going to go out too much further is these are all where the standard de deviations are. In between here, we should have 68% of the population in between uh, here and here. That's going to account for 95% uh, of the population. And if I go from here to here, we're going to account for 99.7% of the population. So out to three standard deviations, you're talking there's only 3% or 0.3% of the population that is outside of three standard deviations as well. Okay, so it's not really where they you go out to a fourth standard deviation. Fourth standard deviation, I believe, goes to 99.9. .9. And if you go a fifth standard deviation, it goes 99.99. .99, and then it just uh, continues to approach 100% without ever reaching 100%. Okay, so um, the first question says, uh, draw a normal curve. We got that. What percent of women are between... 66 and 71. So what we're going to look at is we want to say between one standard deviation, what percent of women are going to fall between that? And that's going to be 68%. That's one standard deviation either way. 68% of the women in the United States will be between 66 and 71 inches in height. Okay? And this doesn't account for, you know, you're going to have somebody say, well, I have a friend that doesn't fall within that range. Having a friend that doesn't fall within that range is fine. They might fall further to the left or might be further to the right. What percent of women are taller than 73.5? So what percent are taller than that? So if you flip back to the previous page, this accounts for 13.5% of the region. This accounts for 95%. So if I wanted to do this, if I wanted to find how much taller these people are, 
How do you think I should go about it? <coughs> so the last two regions of this, um, this region accounts for 2.35%, while this region accounts for the last 0.15%. If I add those together, 2.4% of the women of the United States are above 73 and a half inches tall. Oh yeah, boy, I, I learned how to carry. Thank you. Thanks for covering me. And then one percent of women are shorter than 61 inches. So 61 inches, we're talking this way. So if you go back and you take a look at the last thing, this accounts for 0.15 percent of the population of women are shorter than. 61 inches. And then what is the percentile between 61 and 71? So the last question on this is what account for what accounts for this region right here? Okay, so it's going all the way left, one standard deviation above. Any ideas? And we want to go between here and here. How are you going to get that? Yeah, you're going to add the region. So this right here is 2.35%. This right here is 13.5%. And then this whole region here is 68%. So if you add all those up, you get what? You just said. No, you don't have, you do this. So hang on, let me see my standard deviations. One, two, three. Oh yeah, she had the point one, point one five as well. What'd you get? Eighty-three point eight five percent of the population of women are going to be between the height of sixty-one inches and seventy-one inches. Okay. So then, after that, it asks about z-score. And the z-score goes to the back of the into the back of the book. So at the end of the semester, Dr. Garcia's class statistics were as follows: class one, class two, class three. What is the z-score in a student in, in class one? Okay, and this kid has a score of 82. So in class one, we know that the mean. 70 and the standard deviation is 6. And we want to find the z-score. So the z-score, I'm going to flip back. If we go back to the equation, you have a z-score of x minus the mean over that. So we change the mean to a mu and the standard deviation to this sideways looking, it's, I think it's feet as far as Greek letters go. So we have 82 minus the 70 over the 6. So 82 minus 70 is 12. 12 over 6 is 2. So a score of 2 means he is 2 standard deviations above the average score. So he did better than quite a few people. Okay. And then somebody says a student who score in class two, so problem number three, <coughs> class two, so a, a student scores a 71, so again we're going to take our z-score, we're going to go 71 minus 76 over 5, and we're going to find that out. So I get five, negative 5 over 5. So we get to a z equals one, negative 1, which means he's one standard deviation below. So one thing we have to go back and do is we have to flip to the second to the last page of the back of the book and actually find what the z-score is. Ah, can't find it. So we're going to be using, depending upon if it were positive. So if we go back to problem number 2, the z-score equaling 2, you look on this and you find z and you find 2.0, which is halfway down 2.00. 0. 
So 0.9772. So the area under the curve for a z-score of 2 is 9.9772, which means if we turn this into a score, this person did better than 97.72% of the population in that particular class on that test. This one, having a z-score of negative 1, we have to flip back one page to find the negative z-scores. So negative 1.00, so negative 1.00 is point, or point 0.1587. So the area under the curve for this particular person in class 2 is 0.1587. So this person did better than 15.87% of the other students in the class, meaning 84, more than 84% did better than this person. Yeah, buddy. So four, five, six, seven are all done the same way. And then problem number eight. Going to problem number eight. Problem number eight, you have class two, and we're going to compare that with class 3. So in class 2, this person received a score of a 79. And in class 3, this person also received a score of 79. And they want to know who did better as a whole with the class. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is kind of where education is taking a silly turn. People who are not in education say, hey, we want to, we want by showing test scores, we want to pay teachers who have a higher test score better than teachers that don't have that as high. And the funny thing is, I've taught multiple sections of the same class that have taken the same test, that have heard the same lectures, that have been subjected to the same jokes, have such different average scores as a class. Okay? Do you ever have a friend in a, in a class where they might, I don't know, maybe they tell you, hey, I got... Let's say they got a 74%, and you know you're smarter than that friend, you got a 73%, you're like, what happened? Life, I don't know. So sometimes things aren't controllable, but we're comparing these two scores of these two different classes. So class one, we have a mean of 70, a standard deviation of 6. Class three, we have a mean of 68, and a standard deviation of 8. So what we're going to do is we take a look at the z Do what? Oh, thank you. Six. That's actually going by. Thank you. All right, so class two and class three, I'm sorry. So let's find the z-score of each. So the z-score of this one is going to be 79 minus 76 over 5. So 79 minus 76 is 3, 3 over 5. 3 over 5 is the same thing as 0. 0.6000. Okay, so that's that z-score, and we'll find that in a second. And then this one, this person got, for their z-score, they got a 79 minus the 68 over 8. 79 minus 68 is 11. 11 over 8. Somebody have a calculator real quick. 11 divided by 8. 1.375. Okay, back in the book, look at the z-scores. I mean, right now, when you look at the z-scores, it appears that the person with the 79 in class 3 did better, but how much better percentage-wise did the person do on the test? All right, so the 0 .6000, 0 .7257. One point three seven five, one point three seven. Close is point one nine three four seven. So here's the goofy thing. 
if if this particular teacher was grading on a curve between classes, the person with a 79 in class 2 earns a C. The person with a 79 in class 3 earns an A. Fair or not fair? Same exact score. I mean, it doesn't seem fair. A couple of you got phones out. Please put them away. So, so fair or not? How, how, would, how would you react if, let's say I taught this class two different periods through the day. So, you scored this, your friend scored this, exact same score between the two periods. I graded each class on a normal curve. This kid receives the grade of C because it's a 72.57%. And this kid in this class gets a 91.47, gets the A. What's your reaction? I don't like it much. But what's the difference between the two? Did, do you think the teacher taught any differently between the two classes? I mean, we're talking exact same teacher. Like, let's say we, I had this next period as well. And let's say I went and I ran the scores, and I realized this class had a 76% average with a standard deviation of 5. So this class did was smarter as a whole. And then next period, if I had the same class next period, and they scored 68% with standard deviation of 8, so my data is spread out further, and someone busts out, someone in this class gets a 79, and their best friend in my third period class also gets a 79, the person in this class gets the grade of a C, the person in the next class gets the grade of an A. Crazy? Does it sound nuts? Guys and girls, a few things. You all are getting to the point you're going to start voting. Raise your hand if you think this is a crazy scenario. Like seriously, would you be pissed off if you scored this and got this, and your friend scored the same score as you and got this? Would you be mad? No. Think about it. No. The people who are making the laws, who have never once stepped foot in a classroom, want to do this. Oh, let's reward this person in this class and not reward this person. Why? That's how bad it is. Guys and girls, this is what our education system is going to. Why is it going to this? Because it makes sense when someone says, oh, if this teacher has a higher average score than this teacher, we should pay, pay this teacher more. So theoretically, let's say it was between me and another teacher that we were doing this. We're going to reward this class versus the other. And I will reward that teacher with a better amount of money than the first teacher. Crazy? It sounds crazy to me. You know what they call teachers like me in this scenario? And I hate this. They say, oh, I'm just a union lover. I'm Republican. <coughs> I'm not a union lover. I'm against unions as a Republican. So me as a Republican said, hey, hey, look, this is crazy. And they, their only defense is like, oh, he's just a union lover. Oh, don't, don't listen to union lovers going, wait a minute. I vote down the right side. That's what this is going towards. And so anytime you hear teachers saying, hey, we want we, we think this is kind of silly. And their only defense is saying they're a union lover because so for some reason, somewhere in the United States, some union supported a teacher who sucked, that didn't lose her job, who probably should have lost her job. So now they've exploited that saying, oh my gosh, teachers' unions are a detrimental downfall to education, so let's eliminate all unions. No. Let's not. Let's not worry about the teachers' unions because they're not necessarily a horrible thing. Are there crappy teachers? Yes. Am I a crappy teacher? Gosh, I hope not. 
Some of you might think so, but I think more people think I'm good than bad. I think, I hope. Okay? Let's go one step further. Cinderella, how was opening night last night? Second night? So going well? Going well? Wheels going well? Okay? Full house. So about eight or nine hundred people showed up for it? Is that, that's about what our theater holds? About six hundred people? Okay? Six hundred people show up. Now, I, I, I'm going to figure this out. Hang on, hang on. So, theoretically, theoretically, you all, the, the, this school has bought the rights for this musical, so nobody within a certain amount of distance can also do it. Do you agree? That That's that's something, you might not know this or not. So, so personally, Cherry Creek, Cherry Creek had to buy the rights for this show, and by buying the rights for this show, has a certain distance, there's a certain distance that this show cannot be put on anywhere else, whether it's at the professional level or at the um, school level. Huh? So I'm just Someone just did it, like at least in the state, yeah. Like, like doing it right now, or did it? They did it like a week or something. So then maybe, maybe this has changed from what it had been. Yeah. All right, let's go to let's go. So Douglas County School District or Douglas County High School? I don't know. My boss was with a different high school in Jefferson. Okay. And the national tour, and now there's a movie. <laughs> All right, well, well, let's do this. Let's com let let's compare ourselves to the Douglas County folks. And there's no comparison. There's no comparison. But let let's compare. Let's compare. So, so you guys think about 600 people showed up for your show? And let's say down in Douglas County they had 500 people show up to their show. I know, they probably won't. More like 300. And that's because teachers were given extra credit if you went and saw the show. Sure, you got extra credit. You got 1,000% every time. All right, so, so Cherry Creek versus Douglas County. So, so Cherry Creek had 600. And I believe, maybe I'm wrong, but let's say we have 900 seats in the auditorium. So that's 66% full. And let's say Douglas County has only 400 seats. Okay, so let's say they have 400 seats. So what some people might look at is saying, okay, we had 600 out of 900 seats full in our show, and Douglas County had 300 out of 400 shown. So we want to massage the data to go against Cherry Creek schools. So I'm going to massage the data. You got it right. That's exactly what it is. So we're going to look at the percents. Well, look at Douglas County. They got 75% of their seats full. They're a better school than Cherry Creek High School. So they only had 66% full. And I know I've talked about this before, but do you realize that the Native American males here at Cherry Creek High School that were on free and reduced lunch? 0% were ready for college. Yeah, 0% were ready for college. 100% were not ready for college. And it sounds horrific, but we had one kid that fell into that demographic. But the, but the school district's going, well, take a look here, Cherry Creek High School. You have 100% of your Native American population that are male that weren't college ready that are free reduced lunch. What do you have to say for yourself? That was one kid out of 936 people who graduated. Doesn't matter. So what should we look at? Massage the data. This looks pretty doggone good to me. Especially at that box. How much did a ticket cost? I don't know. Like, I think it's 10 for students. 10 for students? Yeah. Eight, ten, I don't know. I think you're fifteen for a So so ten 
and 15. And then this is a math problem. We can say, hey, we had this many adults, this many kids. We can figure out what your sales were. And let's say down here it's like 6 and 4 or something. I don't know. So then we can look at how much money was actually brought in. Oh, boy, I tell you, we could just pervert this so bad. Oh, we could pervert it so bad. And we could get people to think what we want. Okay, 10, 11, just go into that. All right. Let's move on. What are we wondering? All right. When we are dealing... When we are dealing with a z-score, this is what it is. And this, let's move on to the next lecture. All right. So let's say, let's say we use our z-score equation to find a z-value. So we took our our value that we know, subtract our average, our mean, divided by the standard deviation, find a score of 1.362. That basically means we are 1.362 standard deviations above the average score. So then. Let me repeat that. If I had found my data, if I had some normal score, and I had found my data <laughs> to be 1.362 as a z-score, my z-value, that means I am 1.362 standard deviations above the average. Does that sound pretty good? Shh. Some of you guys are being rude talking too much. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. All right, so I'm going to go to the z-score table in the back of the book. I'm going to look up 1.36. Okay, it's two decimals. So you go down your z-score, you find 1.3. It's about halfway down. 1.36, so I'm going to go over to find the 0.06. 9131. So that's that score, which means this. The area under this curve... The area under that curve is 0 0.9131 of 1, or 91.31% of the area under the curve. Okay? So, if I, so, shh. If this had to do with a test score, this would be, well, how many people did I score better than? I scored better than 91.31% of the population, or 0.9131 of the population. How would I do it if I wanted to go this way? How would I find that red? How many people did better than that person? So theoretically, the area under the curve is approaching how much? 100%. It's approaching 100%. So I can do this one two ways. I can go 100% minus 91.31%, or I can do it as a decimal, I go 1.00 minus 0.9131. One's going to be as a decimal, one's going to be per, as a percent. What's the right answer? Depends what it asks. Help me out. What's it come to? <laughs> How much? Decimal. Give me I, your pick. Uh, 8.6. 8, 8 point what? See how I did that math? All right. So your z-score is this. If it asked, if it asks, how many more people did you do better than? That's what your z-table is going to give. If it says how many more people did better than I or better my score, you're finding the area to the right. You find the area to the right if it's a percent. You go 100 percent minus whatever your percent. If you're using just your decimal amount, you go 1.0. 
or 1 minus whatever your decimal is. So the area to the right is how many more people did better than you? So in this case, 8.69% of the population had done better than us on this particular test. Or you could look at it the other way, saying, I did better than 91.31% of the population. Again, this, is, this could be a massage data situation. Okay, what sounds better? What sounds better? If I didn't add this as the test score, you go home and say, hey, mom, I got a 91.31% on the test. Does that sound pretty good, mom? Yeah. If you go home and say, hey, mom, I missed 8.69% of what was on the test. Doesn't sound as good. Let's massage the data. Let's make it sound better than it is. Okay? I had a student one time had a similar type of score, and the dad asked me, what portion of your class is my child not understanding? I'm not quite sure what 8% of the class your kid's not getting. I'm sorry. I can tell you that of what I present, 91.1 or 0.31% of what the class is being presented, your child gets. Even my bad jokes. Huh. We okay? It is point zero eight six nine. Woo! Okay, Shani. What? I it was my fault. I I. This is it. I was. I was. Well, what is this fault? I was stepping over. All right. So. Guys and girls, next week is silly like this past week, right? So, even more fun. Yeah, we have a collaboration day one day. Oh, I do it. Really? Yeah. I gotta cancel that class in. Bad class. Look close. Where's the broken? No, I don't think so. All right, so 5.2 worksheet is due Wednesday because we have all of that good stuff. Sweet. I can't believe we have a collaboration.